G'day folks. Well, this is the first video tutorial uh, in a small library of video tutorials I've put together for the topic of kinetics. So talking about rates of reaction uh, in chemistry. This first video tutorial, I just want to distinguish um, between the average and the instantaneous rate of a reaction. Hopefully you can hear the nice birds in the background. I'm recording this at home. It's a nice, cool, wintry Saturday morning. Perfect time to be talking about chemical kinetics. Anyway, so to define um, the rate of reaction, let's just start with the basics. When we're talking about chemical kinetics, we're really talking about the change in the concentration or the rate of that change in the concentration. And you can see in this algebraic form here, we use a delta, the Greek term delta, to indicate the change in. And of course, we're talking about the change in concentration, so our square brackets, uh, divided by the change in time. And so if we start with this reaction A to B, in other words, one mole of A, oops, one mole of A gives one mole of B. So the stoichiometry here is very specific. We can say that the negative of the rate of change in A equals the positive of the rate of change in B. Now let's have a think about what that means. As this reaction progresses, the concentration of A is decreasing. In other words, this term here in itself is a negative number. So if we put a negative sign in front of a negative number, this overall becomes a positive value. What about the evolution of the product, B? We're making the stuff, so its concentration is increasing. This is a positive number. The stoichiometry is 1 to 1, and so those two entities are now equal, but only because of that negative sign in front of the A term. What about if we change the stoichiometry? So in this case, we've clearly changed the stoichiometry to 1 to 2. What we're really saying here is, as we use up A, we're creating B twice as fast. So this term here is twice as big as this term here. Does that make sense? So in terms of our equality, we have to include this half sign here. And it's no coincidence in any way, shape or form that we have a 2 here and we have a 2 here. In fact, that's how we link the stoichiometry of the reaction to our rate of reaction equalities. Anyway, moving on to <clears throat> a couple of definitions, the average rate and the instantaneous rate. Let's just take some general reaction. We've got uh, X and Y as our reactants. They react together and they create some molecule Z. And Z is, is actually a colored molecule. As, it, as, it, uh, as the concentration increases, you know, the solution becomes more colorful. And so if you can actually measure the colorimetry of this experiment, you're really measuring the concentration of the product. If you can measure the rate of change in the color, you're really measuring the kinetics of the reaction, aren't you? In other words, the color intensity is proportional to the concentration. And so if we were to make some sort of plot which plots the change in the concentration of Z as time increases, you can see it might look like something, uh, something like this. So as, uh, as time sort of increases, you can see we've got time in seconds on the x-axis, concentration of Z on the y-axis. It's slowly increasing. It's not a straight line. That's probably not surprising to you as the reaction goes on. You're kind of starting to run out of reactants. And if you're starting to run out of reactants, then you can't make Z as quickly. And so the reaction slows down. That's what we're really saying there. So can we calculate the rate of this reaction by using this graph? And I've got a question here, calculate the average rate for this reaction from 5 to 15 seconds. 
If we draw a line up from the five second mark, you can see that on the graph that lines up to a concentration of two moles per liter. In other words, after five seconds, the concentration of Z has gone from zero up to two moles per liter. After 15 seconds, it's actually increased to 3.5 moles per liter. What about the time? The change in time is, let's have a look. It's going to be 10 seconds, isn't it? 15 minus 5 is 10 seconds. In other words, the average rate equals the change in the concentration of Z divided by the change in time. So that's going to equal... So the change in the concentration is going to be 3.5 minus 2 divided by, uh, what do we say, we already worked that out, it's 10 seconds. So it's 1.5 divided by 10, it's 0 0.15 moles per second. Okay, important to get those units right, guys. Okay, so in summary, the average rate for this reaction between 5 to 10 seconds is 0 0.15 moles per second. I put it to you that this value may not be the same if we were to say between what is the average rate between 10 and 20 seconds. Never think about that. Now how does this idea of average rate compare to instantaneous rate? Okay we've got exactly the same reaction here and uh, you can see that if we actually take the tangent to the curve at any point, that will give us the instantaneous rate at that very point in time. And the instantaneous rate is the uh, gradient of the tangent to the curve. And so we've got an example of the tangent to the curve here, sort of being crudely drawn just across that point. And I've actually drawn it <clears throat> at uh, 10 seconds, because I'm going to ask the question, what is the instantaneous rate at 10 seconds? It's halfway between 5 seconds and 15 seconds, for which we worked out the average rate. So let's compare. If we draw a line up from 10 seconds, and we draw our tangent to the curve, we should be able to, if we can get the gradient for that, determine the instantaneous rate at that moment. And the way I might do something like that is um, I've just drawn my little a tangent here exactly from zero seconds and oh, my little line here sort of lines up with 15 seconds so that should help make the um, the maths a bit easier <clears throat> and of course the gradient's just given by the rise over the run isn't it so the gradient equals y over x and so if we took y as being something like 3.4 minus 2.1, uh, which comes from that value there, and, oops, well I say 2.1, that's more like 1.3, so erase that there, so want something like 1.3, x is the uh, the time, so like 15 seconds there, plug that into your calculator, something like that. <clears throat> so the instantaneous rate at 10 seconds is more like 0 0.14. Okay, let's compare that to the average rate. The instantaneous rate at 10 seconds is 0.14 moles per second compared to the 0 0.155 average rate from the previous question. <clears throat> well, yeah, that's, um, that's a little bit different, isn't it? I put it to you that the instantaneous rate is kind of a more useful concept. And certainly when we're solving a lot of numerical equations in kinetics, you'll find it's really the instantaneous rate, not the average rate that we rely on. We'll talk about this more in the upcoming video tutorials.